Daylight opens on a delivery man wearing a white hazmat suit that reads, From Our Home to Yours, with the logo of a house with a heart of wings in the middle. He is carrying boxes from stage right to center, plopping them down, consulting his paperwork, and checking over the orders. He's young and clean cut. Behind him are four doors with stairs going up to two of the doors. It's a facade that does not imply any particular place, but looks somewhat working class and plain. Each door has its own decoration. Okie dokie. Let's get these puppies to their rightful homes. He takes latex gloves out of his pocket and snaps them on. He retrieves a mask from his breast pocket and place, puts it in place. Then he takes a pocket mirror and poses before lifting the first box. He approaches the door on the bottom floor, stage right. It's black with a Satan head, tongue lolling with flames painted on it. One pushes the buzzer and steps back quickly. The door opens, heavy metal music blasts out, and a cloud of smoke streams forth. A big guy with a beard, bald and wearing a torn Metallica shirt, opens the doors hard and wide. There's a joint in his mouth. Ding dong! From our home to yours, making sure you get what you desire. Is that right? Well, I'm pretty sure you can only fulfill that partially if you catch my drift. I mean, you're pretty, but you're not my type. <coughs> You should get that looked at. <laughs> what? Oh, this, come on, man. You're not buying into that COVID conspiracy. Hey, you look stressed, man. Here, have a toke. Oh, thank you, but no, uh, I am uh, working and... Uh, ding dong! Please enjoy your delivery from our house to yours. I will leave it here. He uses a pole to push it towards Ambrose. Ambrose starts rifling through the boxes without putting on gloves. Yes. Dad's chocolate chip cookies, cream soda, pepperoni sticks, oh, and rolling papers, yes! Hey, where's the cigarettes? It's bad for your lungs. What? Your lungs. We are living in serious times and must take care of each other. You're shitting me, right? No, but as a treat, I did include an extra roll of extra soft toilet paper on the house. The door directly above Ambrose opens. It's painted turquoise and festooned with Tibetan prayer flags. Eloise, 65 years old, with grey long hair in two braids, pops her head out. She's wearing a tie-dyed mask and a silver lame hazmat suit. Greetings, fellow planetary survivors. Excuse me, Sir Ambrose. Would you partake of your pleasures elsewhere? Smoke rises. See? See? What the fuck? You guys can't tell me what to do. This is still a free country, last time I looked. <laughs> <laughs> you are a little behind the times, my co-dweller. The cracks are gaping, and we are in a free fall. Speaking of which, Mr. Delivery Man, I hope my order has arrived. It has indeed. And I have your supplements. Oh. Eloise is lowering a rope with a basket on the end to haul up her delivery. Juan heaves her packages and a mysterious box into the basket. Mmm, about time. You have to start ASAP if you really want the full effects. Did you start taking yours like I told you to? I certainly have, Miss Eloise. He sticks out his tongue in his bright blue and glowing. Fuck, what kind of shit are you guys into? And you tell me what to smoke? You're both a couple of crackpots. And next time, bring my goddamn cigarettes or I will report you for delivering questionable substances. This is legal. L-E-G-A-L. -E can you say the same? Huh, can you? Dear neighbor Ambrose, my instinct tells me that underneath that gauche and hairy exterior, you are a courageous and open-minded soul. So... Even though it was harder to procure than a vir virile man over 60 and dearer than gold bouillon, I am willing to share. This can be our little secret and a small price to pay for saving your life. She unwraps the box of vials, untwists the cap, and with head thrown back, empties a dropper full into her mouth. Both men are watching her. Fine, let me try some of that. If there's one thing I got, it's time. <sighs> A little drop will do you. I'm hardcore, baby. What the hell is that stuff? The downstairs apartment on the right flings open the door. 
The door is studded with hot pink lights in the form of a hypersexual, sexy woman's body. The inside of the apartment is glowing red. Cindy pokes her head out. She's wearing a sheer but tattered negligee over a push-up bra and a thong, and still has stilettos on. She's about 45, but looks like life has taken its toll. What's the racket out here? A gal needs her beauty sleep. It's one in the afternoon, Morning Glory, and I believe we are well within our rights to make life-saving decisions at a serious time like this. Ding dong! From our home to yours, making sure you get what you desire. He pushes a large flowered box with a pole towards her. Oh, honey, that is so sweet. But unless you got $50 and a body condom, I don't think you can help me out. I don't recall ordering so much. Frozen tater tots and gin is all I remember. <laughs> Gotta keep the goods in shape for the coming tidal wave of hungry customers, right? Hey, cutie. Maybe you and I can quarantine together in these special times and all? He sticks his tongue out and moves toward her when he begins to levitate and shake. Juan uses a pole to prod him back. Holy damnation! He's holding on to his door jam while his legs are trying to go up, up and away. I'm going back to bed. I need to sleep this weird shit off. What was that? Oh, I told him to take a drop. Not my fault he's a glutton. That's the kind of thinking that got us into this problem in the first place. It'll wear off eventually, so just relax. Be as about it as it may, it is a side effect that we don't want to unleash, now do we? Here, put, put that around your foot and tape it to the table, please. You guys poisoned me. Call the cops, hurry. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna happen. So what'd you give that asshole anyway? Nothing. Nothing. Cindy steps out gingerly and looks up. Holy baloney, old lady. You look like you gave a blowjob to a smurf. All of you, blue, really blue tongues. Everything boils down to the basis level, doesn't it? Why blowjob? Why not sour candy fizzies or a blue popsicle or the gentian violet pellets released from the Amazonian indigo macaw? Excuse me, Miss Granola. Some of us still like the meeting of the bodies. <laughs> I haven't seen a blue popsicle in ages. I used to love them, actually. Pellets? What do you mean pellets? Only during the first two weeks of the first new moon of the year. Isn't that correct, Mrs. E? Exactly so. She's unwrapping a parachute and shaking it out. Will someone tell me what the fuck I swallowed? Language? What are you two? Fucking outer space twins? Okay, please, what is in the drops? It is macaw scat. Shit. Bird shit. But special shit imbued with the concentrated source of the violet that only blooms for two weeks a year and contains the gift of flight. Flight? Like to the moon, Alice? Come on, it's acid, right? Hey, I won't tell anybody. You guys running a little business here, right? His legs are twitching and he's holding tight to the door. Certainly not. We only deliver what is most needed at a time like this. There's a crack in the ceiling right now. Timing is crucial. Let's pretend that it's possible to fly to a place now that's your haven. Where would you go, hypothetically speaking? No brainer. Las Vegas, baby. Really, Mr. Ambrose? A gambling man, are you? I'm talking Las Rages, the heaviest of heavy metal head-banging parties on the planet. I actually got to play there, but that was a few years ago. His body wants to float away and he's holding on for dear life now. Juan takes a heavy box and shoves it towards him. Here, tether yourself down. That's odd. These walls are paper thin, but I haven't heard you play, ever. Now you, <laughs> that I have heard aplenty. <laughs> Get your heart, old lady. Ambrose ties himself down to a large box. Haven't picked up the stick since, well, it's been a while. What, what's a while, sir, eh? A year? Two? Four years, five months, and three days. Wow, I never took you for a man who could remember his mother's birthday, never mind something as specific as that. 
How would you know? Your revolving door keeps you pretty dizzy, don't it? Doesn't leave much time for you to see what's around you. Have another swig, why don't you? Don't mind if I do. She upends the gin bottle and gloves a good swallow while Ambrose lights the joint and starts hacking. They glare at each other from their respective doorways, <coughs> social distance apart. <coughs> That's what I love about this place. A real tight community. <coughs> I believe there is something at the bottom of your delivery box, Mr. Ambrose, that you have not unpacked yet. Huh? How? I swear there wasn't anything when I looked, and, and this, uh, I mean, this is nuts. He's holding a pair of drumsticks with his name embossed on them. Ambrose, fine. These are mine, but I burnt these. I remember exactly because it was... Four, four years, years five, five months, months, and, and three, three days, days ago. ago. Uh, this is getting too weird. I'm going to bed. You haven't done to opened your, pra your package yet. Take it back. As I said, I got what I need. And this is a mistake. Well, I for one am pretty curious. Ambrose seems to be pretty stoked by his secret Santa. Yeah, for a tough chick, you are a chicken. I mean, just saying. Since I picked a place, where would you go if you could? You know, helicopter out of here in this fucked up situation, and I'm not just talking Corona, sister. I'm not your sister, brother, and I don't have to tell you squat. They're shouting at each other, and Juan is trying to shush them, so nobody notices that the door to apartment four upstairs is opened. The door has a rainbow painted on it by a child. The rainbow is faded, and underneath is a warning sign. Don't bother us. Go away. A young woman with a basket of laundry and a faded dress is peering down. I wish I could fly somewhere. I mean, almost anywhere with all this going on, I mean. It'd be nice, I think. Nice to see you, Sammy. Don't get to see much of you. Not outside, at least. Can hear you sometimes, though. How's the boy? Fine, thank you. We're all doing fine. Yeah, right. And I got a pineapple feel for sale in Tuck to Yuck Tuck. One holds up a small box with a ribbon. Ding dong! From our home to yours, making sure you get what you desire. Kickboxing lessons would come in handy from what I can tell. I didn't order anything. We got what we need. Who are you talking to now? I told you it's dangerous to commingle. Keep those germs away from our son, you hear? Just hanging out the wash, baby. Boy is sleeping. That shouldn't take no time. Don't go yammering with that old hippie bitch next door. Nosy as hell. Hippie and bitch. My, my. Two compliments in one fell swoop. So, how are you? I mean, with the isolation and everything. You're just hunky-dory. Right, honey? Your sailor is home, high and dry. Always good when the boat docks and troops are in town to protect us. You know something? I could really use a break. Give me some of that bird shit. I've had worse. Juan and Eloise look at each other, shrug, and she lowers her basket. Cindy gingerly takes the vial and stares at it. Don't follow our drummer boy's lead. A little drop will do you. Just remember, you choose where you fly. <laughs> Trust me. That's what the snake said in the Jungle Book. <laughs> I haven't thought of that movie in years. Used to love Mowgli and his life in the jungle. She takes a drop in her tongue and a soft blue light radiates off her. Woohoo! Let the party begin! Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, I forgot all about that. <laughs> Hey, the tough chick has a heart. Never heard you laugh before. Or cry, as a matter of fact. Oh, shut up, Mr. Ambrose. You want to tell us what happened four years, five months, and three days ago? No? Hey, sweetie. It's okay. We're, a cor we're in corona shutdown, meaning no distractions. So basically, we're facing ourselves 24-7. Your mirror follows you around, and instead of losing yourself in someone else's lust, need, or anger, we got a chance to go home. Now, I don't mean your apartment, which in some cases is the last place you would call home. I mean the word home as in haven, 
if you catch my drift. Hey, I'm getting up there. And if it was up to the indiscriminate virus or the discriminating assholes weaving the net around us as we splash around in our ignorance, well, my fellow earthlings, I would be statistic number another old lady kicks the bucket alone and useless. Except I don't feel useless or that old. Cause I feel blue. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I feel blue, ready for something new. So blue, so blue, cause I got wings. Woo! Wanda's dancing and stops as soon as she stops singing and resumes his respectful stance. Ambrose is keeping time. I guess if you want to talk about dispensable, I would be the top of the list myself. Let's see, who gets on the life raft? Doctors, lawyers, and aging whores. <laughs> Somehow it doesn't have the right ring to it. I guess I would like to go to a place where I count in some way that doesn't involve constantly faking it. I'm just so damn tired. It's not like the world would be a lesser place without Cindy, the talking, posturpedic mattress, doing the horizontal cha-cha. The stage collapsed. There was a sudden lightning storm and a wind. I'm talking a mean-ass wind, like... God let out a huge belch after bad Mexican takeout, and we were on our encore when, bam, the world shook. The festival in Vegas. I saw that on the news. Tornado a la Wizard of Oz proportions. Yeah, except kicking your heels in biker boots don't get you back to Kansas. I looked long and hard, man. Under the debris and the people all twisted up, but I never did find any ruby slippers. Never found anyone again and never played again. But if I could rewind, I sure as shit wouldn't do an encore. Cut and run before the house falls down. That's a bad one, neighbor. I get you about no repeats. Hindsight and all, some of us take a long ass time to learn that one. I know I did, and yeah, maybe still am. Hey! Sammy, you listening? I'm really sorry that happened to you. I'd love if my boy could give you play sometime. He loves to bang on anything he can. I mean, when he's allowed. But Roscoe doesn't go for noise too much. He's, he's tired a lot. You talking about me to these losers, darling? That laundry must be hung and dry by now. I think boy needs you. Sammy exits inside. Roscoe leans over the balcony. Jeez, you're all blue. Is this some kind of COVID symptom? Stay away from you bunch of weirdos, every one of you. This virus is here for a reason, and I, for one, plan on surviving it in a pared-down world. A little more breathing room for the good guys. Ding dong! Delivery from our home to yours. I have an extra bottle of very fine scotch, Mr. Roscoe, and since I am in awe of your bravado, I would like to offer it to you with my sincerest hope that you will accept it in good faith. Why would you do that? You didn't spike it with any poison or anything by any chance. I mean, I just called you a bunch of weirdos. That must sting. Actually, I agree with you 100%. We are misfits and no credit to this society whatsoever. R right, folks? We're a bunch of misfits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I always felt like a round peg in a square hole ever since I could skip school. Sorry about that. Got to agree. The idea of putting on a suit and tie or a sailor uniform, for that matter, just did not grab me by the balls. Weirdo, for sure. Sterilized, sealed, and delivered. He puts a bottle in a bag and extends it to the waiting hands of Roscoe, who examines it and unscrews the top, takes a sniff, and a big swig before walking inside. You are welcome. That was a waste of good booze. It reminds me of so many guys I have had the misfortune to know. There must be a factory where they roll off the assembly line, ignorant and mean. You want to know where I would go? I would go find the Amazon women. I saw a documentary and they just seemed really strong. They didn't let anyone push them around. Red feathers begin to fall around her. 
Indeed, the Amazonian women were fierce warriors who established cities in Smyrna and Ephesus, amongst many. Queen Pethesilea and her sister Hippolyta used their magical gifts and their wiles in the Trojan War, for example. <clears throat> it's okay to be a mythological figure if it keeps you veiled from prying eyes. You're not going to cut off your right breast, are you? I mean, from here they look pretty good and just saying, it would be a crying shame. If that's what it took. Where are these feathers coming from? Oh, don't worry about cutting off any parts of your body, tits included. I believe they have evolved to the point where body alterations are entirely voluntary. Even Amazons have gone PC. You can imagine a group of independent, forceful gals in a democratic consensus, living arrangement. Ah, oh, the endless meetings. Lord have mercy. But, as I said, admirable. She's a brick. House. She's mighty, mighty. She's letting it all hang out. She's a brick. House. She's, She's a mighty, mighty, mighty. She's letting, letting it all hang out. Mm. You talk as though they were real. I mean, it's a myth. And where would you have ever met them, even if they did exist? Well, of course, it all depends on what you consider fact or dreaming. And just think of the possibilities if you could dream your way out of this. You used to have technicolor dreams, if memory serves me right. Why don't you open up that parcel? It really does belong to you. Sammy has come out to the balcony to watch and listen. How would you know about my dreams? And these feathers, where are you dropping them from? Is it you? Me? Oh, gosh, no, I'm allergic. I'm just checking the laundry. Amazons conquer their fears even when it feels like a total wave of the unknown. Like this invisible virus that has everyone cowering and trying to behave. Are you sure you have what it takes to fight your own Trojan War? Don't tell me what to do. She rips the paper off and takes out a glass flying unicorn mobile. My unicorn! She floated above my bed night after night. That's when I fell asleep, watching until, well, till we had to move. Pretty sure she didn't get packed. We left in a hurry and I never saw her again. Seriously, is that what all this buildup is about? I was expecting a magic sword at least. I think it's beautiful. Doesn't make any sense, but I agree. Shit, I used to have wild dreams. God, finally, yes you did. And in your dreams, you flew. I want to fly too. Please, I mean. I'm sure you do. Where is that lovely son of yours? Hey, what kind of crap are you filling her head with? Nobody's flying anywhere. Not you, or you, or you, and especially not you. Leave me, you think? I'll get the boy, and you will never see him again. Stay out of our business. Patience is not my biggest virtue. He drags Sammy inside and shuts the door. That is the first true thing to come out of that man's mouth. So why? Why what? Why did you cut and run so fast? Leaving the flying horse behind. Unicorn, please. Man, same old story. Boring shit. We're, We're interested. interested. I swear, you two are seriously strange. His legs begin to twitch and try to rise. Thank, Thank you, you kindly. kindly. Everyone looks at Cindy who sits down on the box. Damn. Okay. You listening? Don't fall asleep because it's nothing you haven't heard before. Poor family. One younger sister and a single mother who was either sleeping it off or hitting us with whatever was handy. Except when she was showing off to one of her men friends. You know, 
tablecloth and smiles all around. That was the scariest because we knew that as soon as the relationship went south, we would pay. One night, her heart was so badly broken, she wanted to break ours along with it. Until the neighbors finally had enough. Called the authorities, and they came for us. No time to pack, really. Like I said, same old story. Foster kids don't really like to brag. Hey, it's not like it was your fault, you know? I mean, you were a kid. Shit happens no matter who you are. Like this fucking Corona, Corona, Corona. The world is peligrosa, zona, zona, zona. I'd give you a hug, kid, but I can't cross the threshold these days. Same, same, but different, darling. Every story carries its own flavor, including yours. Like snowflakes. Too far one. And your sister, where is she? No idea. We lost touch after my path went all the way downhill. Maybe she's in Amazonia with a bow and arrow for all I know. Well, my dears, time is of the essence. And hard as it may be, the trying times do provide portals. <laughs> Why, I remember the Spanish flu fondly in my own way. That was a momentous period. Hop to it, amigo. We can't afford to meander down memory lane. There's work to be done. You sure you guys are from the quick and tidy mart where I placed my order? Of, of course, course we, we are. are. There's a commotion upstairs. The sound of furniture banging and shouting. Everything okay up there? That is the most stupid question I ever heard. Hey, lay off, you asshole! You're not talking to me, dirty whore. I could give a rat's ass about social distancing, so one more word and I will come down. You pansy-ass weirdos, all together don't add up to one worthy opponent. Enjoying the fine spirits up there, Mr. Roscoe? You only had a few sips. <laughs> I thought you were a real man who could hold his liquor. She produces a glass filled with amber liquid. Cheers, salute, and santé. She downs it in one gulp and fills her glass again. Big man to old lady, keep up. You are a pussy in every sense of the word. This is like soda pop to me, baby. He upends the bottle and swings. To the culling of the weak. Minded. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Miss Eloise, it's not recommended to imbibe during this crisis. Immune system. Show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. Eloise is singing, but slinging back shot after shot, egging Roscoe on. The contest is on. Feathers are flying and the blue light is strobing. Eloise stumbles against the railing. It looks like she might fall over, but at the last minute she slumps to the ground. Ha! You old bag! I told you that I have the capacity of a bull! Come out here, Sam! Now! Look at the scum you are fraternizing with! You're blessed to have a man like me! Fucking blessed! Sammy appears and he pulls her to the edge, leaning on her. If it wasn't for me, You'd be as stupid as the rest of them! He guzzles the rest of the bottle, grabs her by the throat, and collapses. Are you okay? Yes, but he's gonna be really mad when he wakes up. There's a long pause, and finally a movement from Eloise's balcony. She rises, brushes herself off, and pats down her hair. <sighs> well, nobody said you have to be here for that sterling occasion. Huh? huh? You can leave. Simple as that. You too can fly away. So, what were you drinking? I, I guess it was tea or something, right? Oh yeah, right. Tea. Miss E, you have got to stop that now. We have discussed this in the past and agreed. No partying on the job. 
I do love you, honey toe, but you can be such a stick in the mud. So, my adjacent friend, ready to flee the coop? Close your eyes and tell me where you would be right now if you could twitch your nose. Well, anyone born after 1980 will not get that reference, but use your imagination. This is gonna sound really stupid, I know, but I always dreamed of being a race car driver. Just going as fast as I can, passing the other cars with my face blowing back. I always did like to drive, and my pops used to be so proud of me when I started taking the truck to town at 14. He hasn't talked to me in two years now. It's been kind of difficult, you know. I wasn't allowed to... Well, anyway, spit in the wind, ain't it? Timing is everything. Here is that delivery you ordered. There's lots of ways to call in an order. He lobs the small box up and she catches it by stepping over the prone body of Roscoe. Opening it up, she pulls out a set of car keys. Don't forget to wear a helmet and please observe the speed limit when Boy is in the car. You are pulling my leg, aren't you? Kind of mean, really. Grab your son, honey. And take a drop of this. You'll be fine. She extends a pole with a vial in a bag over, and just as Sammy gets the bag and takes the vial, Roscoe grabs her ankle. Over my dead body! Oh, don't tempt me like that. Let go, baby. I got something for you. A juicy kiss for all the good times. She takes a dropper full of tincture and leans down to kiss him. Roscoe begins to quiver and rise. Blue lights flicker and everyone watches as he floats away. Well now, that's that. Thank you all for being so neighborly during such dire circumstances. I don't think I'll be needing wings. I got these. I know someone who has to meet his grandson. She waves and goes inside. We hear the sound of a heavy duty motor revving and blasting away with the sounds of Born to be Wild. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Looking for adventure. And whatever comes your way. So what, she gets a Ferrari and I get these? Well, I see a big shiny tour bus in your future. But you got to use this time well. Practice makes perfect. Does he always talk like he's quoting from a book of manners? <sighs> well, ever since I've known him. But of course, we just met here, didn't we, darling? Whatever you say, boss. Friendship knows no time. But I do. This crack in time won't last forever. I can't wait for the next portentous pandemic, Padrino. Hey, Hippolyta. Ready to reunite with Penthesilea? I could use a vacation. And a couple of those broads, they owe me dinner. I got nothing to lose here. Lead the way, old woman. Hey, Ambrose. I like your music. And next time we meet, I'll treat you to a freebie. It'll blow your mind, guaranteed. The lights turn black, rise up blue, and they're, they're gone. Feathers float down, and the music is the Rolling Stones, She's a Rainbow. I look forward to that. Gotta bang the sticks and hold down the fort. Come and visit me sometime, would you? It gets lonely out here. I have you on my list, Mr. Ambrose. Do not fret. And don't forget the cigarettes next time, man. Not a chance. <laughs>